Greetings and welcome to the University of Minnesota Alumni Association's webinar series. My name is Marissa Smith and I'm the Director of Student and Recent Alumni Engagement and your host for today. Thanks for joining us. This has been really outstanding to see the interest in this topic and we're just really excited to get the conversation started. Um, so today's webinar is Side Hustles, How to Find Professional, Flexible, and Remote Side Jobs with Bree Reynolds of Flex Jobs. Before I start the presentation, I have a couple of announcements to share. Today's webinar is part of an ongoing free series being offered by the University of Minnesota Alumni Association, where we have conversations with experts about career, life, and learning topics. And initiatives like our webinar series are made possible in part by our Alumni Association members. So we want to give a shout out to our members. If you are a member, thank you. Because of you, we're able to create these opportunities. And if you're interested in learning more, check us out at umnalumni.org slash membership. And speaking of powerful opportunities, we have a lot of exciting ways to get involved coming up that I want to share with you. Um, first, many of you may already know, we just launched the Maroon and Gold Network, which is a new free online resource from the Alumni Association for accelerating student and alumni career development. So whether you're a student or an alum, you can join and um, reach out to fellow alumni um, or regarding career topics and advice. Um, and alumni can assist others, including students, um, with career advice. It syncs really nicely with LinkedIn. You can schedule all the conversations online and it's very user driven. You can schedule how many times you want to be contacted um, and utilize a really powerful uh, search uh, options that they have where you can find people by industry, college, major, degree type, employer, location, and more. Um, we're really excited about the energy that's already um, buzzing around the Maroon and Gold Network. And so you should definitely check it out at umnalumni.org backslash Maroon and Gold. And for those of you in the Twin Cities area, you might know that today is actually the Minnesota Twins home opener, even though it's very cold outside. We're hoping that it won't be in just a few weeks on Friday, April 27th, when it's U of M night at the Twins game. Um, we'd love to see many of you there. If you are, again, in the Twin Cities area, there'll be lots of fun U of M surprises throughout the night. Plus, you get a really cool Minnesota uh, Twins hat with co-branding with the University of Minnesota with your ticket. So we'd love to see you there. Got a couple of upcoming webinars this spring. On April 26th, we'll be talking about student debt management and refinancing. And on May 18th, we'll be joined by the Humphrey uh, School's Dean, where we'll be talking about leading together, finding uncommon ground and finding common ground rather in uncommon times. And that is actually a new date. Um, so hope to you're able to join us for both of those. And finally, because we had such interest in today's webinar topic, um, we wanted to seek out one of our own um, grads who has a successful side hustle and talk to her about her experience. Um, so this morning on Facebook Live, chatted with Jessica Chung, who is a 2011 grad. Um, and you can find her work um, on Pretty Prints and Paper online. And she combines a love of calligraphy and bullet journaling um, into a really creative uh, and talented side hustle. Uh, her work is also featured on the Minnesota Alumni Market, um, which is minnesotamnalumnimarket.com, and you can find um, some of her beautiful works there. So definitely encourage you to seek out the conversation there. Just a couple of housekeeping items before I turn the webinar over to our presenter. Um, you have joined the presentation by listening in your computer speaker system by default. If you'd prefer to listen over the telephone, just select telephone in the audio pane of your GoToWebinar panel and dial in information will be displayed. If you experience any audio difficulties while listening via your computer speaker, this can be caused by having multiple software applications open, which can use up your computer's bandwidth and affect network performance. Listening in on a wireless signal may also affect performance, so feel free to close any unnecessary applications on your computer. Questions are welcome during the webinar and you can submit them at any time. Please type your questions into the questions pane on your GoToWebinar control panel and we'll be monitoring them along the way. So please feel free to submit your questions, ideas or tips. This is gonna be a fun conversation and we want to hear from you. So without further ado, it's now my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Bree Reynolds. Bree Reynolds is the Senior Career Specialist at FlexJobs, the award-winning site for telecommuting, flexible schedule and freelance job listings. Bree has over 13 years of experience in career advising and job search assistance, a master's of science in human resources management, 
She is a member of the National Career Development Association and a certified advanced resume writer through Career Directors International. She offers career hiring and work-life balance advice through the FlexJobs blog and media outlets like Fast Company, Forbes, and NBC News. I am very pleased to welcome Brie and will now turn things over to her. So just one moment. All right, and it looks like I've got control here. Oh, let me get it to the correct screen. You're just seeing my blank desktop. <laughs> Hold on one second. Let's see. Well, thank you guys very much for having me just while I um, get this uh, set up in the proper place. Ah, there we go. I know there's a setting for it. I just had to remember where to find it. Okay. So thank you, yeah, thank you, Marissa, and thank you everybody for being here today. I'm really excited to talk to you all about this topic. Um, clearly it is a topic that people wanna hear about. I'm so excited for the number of people that signed up today, and I hope that you walk away with some really helpful information. Um, so as Marissa mentioned, we're gonna be talking about side hustles and what exactly that even means and how to find them. Um, and uh, I just wanted to go over some of the topics that I'll be covering. I'll talk briefly about flex jobs and myself, just so you know kind of where I'm coming from, what my background is, and why I'm talking about this particular topic. Um, and then we'll launch into the side hustle job market and what that actually looks like. We'll discuss side jobs that you can do from home in particular, because that seems to be a really popular option for people looking to pick up additional work on the side, you know, whether you're working full time or you are um, a student or whatever it might be, you know, having something on the side can be a lot easier if you're able to do it from home rather than having to commute to a second job somewhere. Uh, and then also we'll go into companies and jobs hiring for side jobs um, and how to avoid job scams, which are an unfortunate component of this job market, but something that with a few key tips you can all steer clear of and stay safe. And then for the last few minutes of the webinar, I wanna open it up for questions from the audience. So you'll be able to type in your questions and we'll try to answer as many of those as we can. And you can type those into the GoToWebinar control panel in the questions area, and we'll try to answer as many as we can. All right, so just a little bit about me. Uh, we celebrated our uh, 10th anniversary of Flex Jobs in 2017, and we list pre-screened telecommuting, flexible schedule, full-time and part-time, and freelance jobs. And so the side hustle part of that area comes in with part-time jobs, freelance jobs, and of course, remote jobs too, as long as they're part-time um, or offer some kind of reduced schedule like that. And then I have been a career advisor for almost 15 years. I actually started out as a college career advisor. Uh, working in a small college in Boston, and I've been with FlexJobs since 2010, um, working completely remotely and in a flexible job, so I definitely understand the value of this type of work for an individual and the perks that you get out of it, the way that it makes your life easier, and I also have engaged in several side hustles, so I understand the value in those as well, um, and I'm happy to talk about my experiences with that, but today we'll focus on kind of key key ways to find this type of work and, and how to get some for yourself. All right, so let's dive into the side job market to begin. First of all, I wanted to define what a side hustle actually is so that we're all on the same page. Um, so it's one of those phrases that you hear a ton nowadays, side hustle, side gig, um, and it means so many different things depending on the person who's talking about it. So in a side hustle, you could be an employee or a freelancer. I think that's one of the key things to know is that sometimes when we think of side hustles, we think of freelance or contract or independent worker types of jobs. But there are also employee jobs that might qualify as side hustle types of jobs. Um, some other ways to say it would be part-time job, uh, which is a, a much broader term, but it definitely encompasses some of the side hustle uh, aspects. A temporary job, freelance, contract work or contract job, independent contract, and you'll see the rest of the list there, lots of different ways to say those types of work. 
Um, if you want to work remotely in particular as part of your side job, so you're actually working from home, there are, of course, a number of different ways to say that as well. But they all essentially mean the same thing. So whether you see something that says it's a remote job or telecommuting or virtual or any of those other words listed there, those all really identify jobs that can be done from home. So there's really not a big difference. It just depends on what that particular company or client wants to call the work that they're doing, whatever, whatever word they prefer. So if you come across any of these words, it could mean um, a side hustle. And if you also kind of pair it with something like remote or telecommute, it could be a side hustle type of job that can be done from home. The, oh, one important thing to note is when you're searching, and we'll talk a little bit about this in the next couple slides, but um, these are all important keywords to use at first. So when you're searching for these jobs, you're trying to find these jobs, you can get a sense of what keywords are most common for your particular career field, your industry, the type of work that you want to do. So we see some you know, trends where um, smaller startup type companies that are newer, that are maybe a few years old, will use the phrase remote job, whereas older, more well-established companies will use the phrases telecommuting or virtual job more often. So there's little changes like that that might happen depending on what you're searching for, your chosen profession, or the side hustle you're trying to get into. So play around with these keywords and see what comes up for you. So the side job, job market right now is a, a whole lot of different things. <laughs> the first thing I wanted to talk about was moonlighters. So this might apply to a lot of you on the call today. There are people with full-time jobs who do freelance work on the side. That's about 27% of the overall side job market today. And then people who hold multiple traditional and freelance jobs, so you may be working full-time and then as a part-time employee and then doing some freelancing, that's about 18% of the side job market. And then freelance business owners, people who really strike out on their own and they are uh, focused 100% on doing freelance work and they don't have a full-time job, that's about 5%. So it's actually a relatively small part of this job market. Um, the number of people doing online or remote work in the side job market is, um, is pretty high. So about 42% of freelancers have found uh, contracts and work to do that's online. Um, and that doesn't include part-time employees. So that would be probably even a higher percentage if you included those folks. Um, but the top reasons that people want to take on side work are listed here, and I would just invite you to kind of read through this and figure out what your reasons for looking for side, uh, side jobs are. Because I think when you know your reason well enough, when you know your why in this situation, it can really help you to pinpoint side jobs that would be most appropriate for you, that would be a really good fit for your lifestyle, your needs, the, you know, what you're trying to get out of the side job. Um, and you're less likely to wind up taking on something that may be too much or maybe just not quite fit with what you are trying to do. So, um, you know, think about your reasons for taking on side jobs and um, and kind of keep those in the forefront of your mind as you're searching so that you can evaluate potential jobs based on how well does it fit with your reasoning? You know, how well does it meet the need that you are trying to fill? All right, so how many side jobs do people have at once? Um, a lot of people wonder, you know, when you get into the side hustle job market, are you gonna be working with a lot of different clients doing small projects or maybe one client doing one big project? Um, this is a really nice breakdown of how many gigs people actually hold all at the same time. So a little bit over half of people who do side hustles have two to three gigs at a time. Um, and so that, you know, that seems fairly manageable for a large percentage of these folks. But then the second highest is 38% have one gig at a time. So if you're looking for a side job and you're really just looking for one thing to do on the side, that's fine. And that encompasses a lot of the people who are doing this work. About 8% have four to five gigs at a time, which is not something I could feel myself doing. I know that's probably pushing my limits. And 3% have more than six gigs, which is an awful lot. Um, that 3% I have a feeling are probably in that small percentage of people who do freelance or side work uh, as kind of their whole career rather than um, working full time and uh, doing something on the side of that. But you never know, maybe not. <clears throat> so some of the top career fields that we see at flex jobs for side jobs. So essentially what I did was I queried our job database, which is the listings of jobs, um, listings of jobs from companies um, that were part time, they might have been freelance or employee. Uh, they were temporary or contract. They kind of fit all of those different definitions of side job. 
And these were the career fields that came up as having the most listings for side jobs, for those types of on the side work that you might be looking for. Um, and what I was struck with was the variety of career fields that are offering this type of work. So you have everything from computer and IT, which might be, you know, if you ask someone to guess what a typical side job would be in, that might be up there as one of the top guesses. Um, but then medical research and writing, of course, um, operations, data entry, um, uh, quality assurance, uh, manufacturing even, there's a lot of variety in side jobs. And so what I hope you'll take away from this slide is really that there is something out there for pretty much everyone. There are so many different fields hiring for this type of work. And actually something I should point out, this is just the top 20 career fields out of 55 potential career fields. So if you don't see your particular interest up here, it's not time to panic because there were jobs found in all 55 career fields. It's just that these ones tended to have a very high number of side jobs um, compared to the entire list of 55. But there were jobs in each of those additional ones, so it might take a little bit of extra searching, uh, but you should be able to find something in your line of work as well. This is also a good list to look at if you're thinking of trying something new with a side job. So maybe you're working full time in one type of career, but you're sort of interested in transitioning into something different or working on a plan B in case that plan A job falls through. Um, so this will tell you where there's a lot of opportunity in case you're considering transitioning into a different career, but you're not quite sure what you'd like to do. There's a lot of opportunity in these top 20 career fields. Okay, I also wanted to touch on the most common remote job titles when it comes to side jobs, um, mainly because whenever we poll groups of people and ask them, if you could pick a type of work flexibility that you would most like, what would it be? And the options are uh, remote work, part-time, freelance, uh, and flexible schedules. And by far the number one choice for people is remote work. So most people do wanna work from home, whether that's part-time or full-time, um, or as a side job. And so this list of remote job titles just kind of also shows you the variety of remote work that's out there um, in case you're looking for that in particular. So I just wanted to highlight that to show you what that looks like in the remote job market in particular. Okay, so one of the things that we looked at recently at FlexJobs is the top companies for part-time remote work. And this list was essentially compiled because we wanted to find out which companies hire the most for part-time jobs you can actually do from home. Um, and so one of the things that, that struck me about this list was that a lot of these companies are not companies that are super well-known. Oops, let me go back to there, there we go. Um, you know, some of them are actually really large companies that you may not have heard of. So um, companies like K12 and Appen hire many thousands of people to do part-time remote work, but they're not necessarily household names. Whereas, you know, companies like Amazon, you know, you, you've all heard of that company and they do quite a lot of hiring, but they're not necessarily well known for part time at home work, even though they do offer that sort of thing. So there are a lot of companies on here that you may not have heard of and maybe you may be seeing their names for the first time, but they might be worth looking into because they do hire for the most part time remote opportunities out there. And if you're looking for a way to add a side hustle into an already very busy life, uh, being able to do it part time from home can be a really helpful way instead of having, like I said at the beginning, to commute to uh, some other location to do your second job. And this was based on the volume of job postings over the past year, I believe. So we looked at all of 2017 to see which companies had hired for the most number of part-time remote jobs. Oh, and one other thing to note about this is that it's out of 49,000 companies. So we um, we scanned that huge database to see which companies have posted the most jobs. And this is the only the top 25 out of thousands and thousands of companies. So uh, there's a lot more opportunity out there. These just are the ones that really came across as hiring a lot for this type of work. Okay, so let's talk just a little bit about side hustle specializing, because this is one of those areas that people often ask about. Um, should I be a specialist? Should I, should I specialize in some particular area of my career field? Or should I be a generalist? Um, and one example of this might be someone who's looking to do some writing work on the side. 
Um, there are plenty of freelance writers who are generalists. They, uh, they can write pretty much anything. Um, they're really good researchers and they can pick up on topics quickly and they know how to source you know, information when they don't have it themselves. Um, so that might be somebody who's a really good generalist, but then a specialist may have um, you know, some experience in a very particular career field or industry and they wanna focus their writing on that and write only for that type of audience. Um, so there's a couple different ways that you might be able to pick a specialty. Um, the reasons that you would have a specialty, sometimes depending on your career field, a specialty can be a little bit more lucrative when it comes to a side job because it's a harder thing for employers to find and fill these little niche uh, or niche um, uh, areas that they're looking for. So it can sometimes be a little bit more lucrative. That's not always the case. So it's a really good idea to do some research um, and there are a lot of different freelancing sites out there where there's freelance communities where you can actually talk to other freelancers or people who do part-time work and ask them kind of what rates do they charge and, and that sort of thing and get a sense of whether specializing would be beneficial to you in that way or whether being more of a generalist would be good. Um, so having a, a specialty can work for that. But also if you just have a particular set of skills, um, not to quote <laughs> that, that um, uh, Liam Neeson movie, but if you do have a specialty already, it can be really easy for you to jump into a side job market using that specialty. Um, so that might be another reason to use the specialty. But if you want to be a generalist, that might also be helpful if you're looking to, as I said before, transition careers or try something new or build a new set of skills. You might look to more towards generalizing because you'll be able to do multiple different things depending on what your type of work is. So a different, a different ways to look at specialties, there's types of work. So it, you could be looking for a side job that's a spinoff of your most common jobs, the things that you've done most often in your career. It could be a related but slightly different career area. So something that is on the periphery of what you've been doing with your career so far. Or it could be a hobby or outside interest that you've never really quote unquote professionally worked in, but that you might be able to turn into a professional endeavor or it could be something completely new. So just in thinking about your own reasons for wanting a side job, um, that might help you down one of these paths and figuring out what your specialty might be if you wanna have one. Um, you could also specialize in the types of clients that you have. So you could work in the same industry that you've been working in or branch out into a different industry but offer the same skills that you've been using already in your career. You could work for a small or a medium or a large organization or you could actually help other freelancers and solo business um, owners because there actually has become uh, a decent sized market for uh, freelancers supporting freelancers. Um, so if you have a specialty in something like accounting, let's say, you know, people who branch out and open up their own um, independent businesses as freelancers, oftentimes the business aspect is not their favorite part of the, of the whole operation of being your own boss. And so they might look to outsource that and people who specialize in helping freelancers with things like taxes and, uh, and setting up incorporating businesses and things like that um, can find a pretty nice niche there. So that's just one example um, of, of being able to help out fellow freelancers or um, side hustlers. So how to actually choose your side hustle specialty if you want to have one. Uh, the first thing is to think about what problems can you help fix? So thinking about your best skills, the areas or topics or type of work that really excites you, and also the biggest need in your field or other fields. And this might sound very familiar to more of a traditional job search, and it really is similar to that. Thinking about what you're really good at, what really excites you, and what is a need that those two things can, can fill. Um, and going from there. And then also studying your market. So what part-time or freelance jobs are actually listed for the different types of work that you might be able to do? Actually going out and doing some research. Um, you can you know, do that research on flex jobs. You can see all of the job listings, whether you're a member or not, and just kind of get a sense of what's out there. You could also use sites like LinkedIn or Glassdoor or any you know, good job search website out there. Um, what pain points do employers have? What are you seeing, you know, problems that are arising over and over in these job descriptions that, um, that they're asking people to, to, to come in and fix when they're trying to hire people? Um, and then how much are people charging and making? You know, if you have 
uh, a need out of this side hustle to make a certain amount of money, let's say that one of the main reasons that you're doing a side hustle is to make money, is to make additional money for your budget, um, what are other people charging in different specialty areas and what would be the most lucrative area for you so that you can actually meet that need that you're trying to fill? And then you could also join freelance groups in your field. So LinkedIn is a good place for this. There are lots of different freelance you know, chat groups on LinkedIn that you could go into. Um, there's also a site called the Freelancers Union. I think it's freelancersunion.org. And that has a really good just broad range of freelancers who you can chat with. Um, about what they're doing, how much they're charging. Freelancers tend to be pretty open about rates and rate setting because it is one of those areas that can be so confusing when you first start. Um, and especially if you're talking to freelancers who are not necessarily in your physical area or um, who you wouldn't directly be competing with, they're pretty open about sharing this information um, in these, these group settings. Um, so that's kind of a nice thing about the side hustle market. But really studying the market and seeing you know, what's out there, what could you potentially get into, what's already being listed, and then going from there is another way to, to get into your specialty. And yes, people have multiple specialties. Um, I recent heard, recently heard the phrase multi-potentialite, which is somebody who has a lot of different skills and interests and things that they like to do for work. And so they don't necessarily specialize, but they do offer a lot of specialties, if that makes sense. So, they have you know, maybe five specialties of different types of work that they offer, um, which kind of makes them a generalist in some ways, but also not. Uh, it's, kind of, it's a strange paradoxical situation, but some of you may be multi-potentialites and be able to have a few different specialties. So here are some examples of people who are in the side job area and doing um, uh, specialties. So the first one, Kate Schaefer's, she um, is a psychologist and she also is a consultant and a coach. Um, and she does a really nice job. She has this personal website where she um, really discusses very clearly what she can offer. Um, and she has done a nice job of, of branching out. So she is a psychologist, but she's also a consultant, I believe, for organizations and specific industries and then a coach for people as well. Um, and then the one to the right of Kate is a writer and they've got their writing specialty here, content and copy for educational organizations, nonprofits, news and media outlets. So they are specializing, but it's also um, a, kind of a wide variety of specialties. So there's that paradox. Um, and then the one underneath Kate, where they list specialties, I believe this came from a LinkedIn profile. Um, this person was an uh, economy-related profession. So they've got economic analysis, forecasting, benefit cost analysis. They have lots of different specialties, things that they could actually offer um, and then also presentations, which is an entire separate thing. If you are a good communicator and you enjoy talking to people, that's you know a, a really key piece of what might be your side hustle. Um, you know those communication skills can come in handy because not everyone likes to do that. And then we have over here in the end Rayanne, um, who is a product and commercial photographer. So she's a photographer as a side hustle, and she's specializing in product and commercial photography. So just a couple different examples of, of the ways people specialize when they branch out into freelancing and side hustling. So branding yourself for hire, how do you actually put yourself out there as a side hustler? Um, on LinkedIn, you can include information that you are a freelancer. Um, I would you know, recommend, it depends on how comfortable your employer might be with you doing side work and how closely related that work is to what you're doing full time for that employer. So you wanna be considering whether you're competing um, against them or not. But if you're able to, if you feel comfortable enough that, that what you're doing would be accepted by your employer, you could certainly put that on LinkedIn um, for other people to find. So that might go under your headline on your LinkedIn profile where you could have your full-time job title and you know, independent consultant or freelance writer or uh, you know, part-time accountant or something like that, you know, whatever it might be. Um, you can also talk about that in your summary on your LinkedIn profile, and you can include it as a job on your LinkedIn profile. You know, the number of years that you might have been doing this, um, whether it's part-time work, occasional work, you can still include that as a job um, on your LinkedIn profile. And then you could also create an online portfolio or a simple website like we saw on the page before. Um, a couple people have, you know, a couple of those examples were independent websites that people had created, and they can be very simple. So there's a site called about.me uh, that's free, and it's one page, and it's a really easy way to just create a very simple profile for yourself. 
Um, and you could de dedicate that completely to your side hustle so that you're really branding yourself as someone who is doing that type of work. Um, there's also WordPress and Squarespace and they have their own pros and cons. So that's something to look into also if you're looking to develop um, a, a slightly more robust website but without having to do the development work yourself. Or if you have those kind of skills, you could certainly build your own website. Um, and then on social media, of course. So looking at your side hustle area, your, your specialty or just the career field that you wanna do this type of work in, look for where other freelancers doing that type of work are already going. So for some people, it might be Instagram. For other people, it might be Twitter or Facebook. Um, there's pros and cons to each of those, and really it depends on the type of work that you're hoping to do. Um, but try to pinpoint that, look for other freelancers in your area and see where they have a strong presence and then um, and then go there. <laughs> That's a good place to go. And you could also set up profiles in all of these different places, wherever you're comfortable using social media to just highlight your offerings. So if there doesn't seem to be some trend where most of the people who do side hustle work in your particular field go to uh, Instagram, it could be that they're kind of go everywhere. You could do the same thing and just have a, a very simple profile in each area to highlight your offerings as long as you're being consistent across those channels and, and talking about who you are and what you can offer. The more that we can reinforce that to people who might hire you, the more likely it is that you'll get hired. Okay, so here's some examples of freelance branding. Now this is sort of similar to when we were looking at people's specialties before, uh, but you've got uh, Catherine Hunt up at the top. She's a freelance bookkeeper and this is her LinkedIn profile. Um, and so you can just see right off the bat, freelance bookkeeper. And that tells everybody what they need to know almost immediately, the type of work she's doing, the fact that she does it for multiple clients. And yes, maybe she would be able to work for you. Um, I also included a snippet from her LinkedIn profile where she actually set up a freelance bookkeeper job on her LinkedIn profile that shows people what she's been doing. Um, so she's very specific, provide bookkeeping support on a part-time contract basis for small businesses across sectors. And she goes on to it from there. So she's very clear, uh, shows how long she's been doing this. And um, it just gives people a good understanding of what exactly she has to offer. Um, up at the top, we have Robin Maydell, who's actually one of the freelance writers at Flex Jobs. Um, but her website's a really nice example of how she's branded herself as a specific type of writer. Um, and you'll see her branding if you went to her Twitter profile or her um, LinkedIn page, it would all be the same. So you're getting the same Robin everywhere you go. And it's just a really nice way to reinforce that branding of her as this type of person um, for this type of side work. And then at the bottom, uh, we've this is a Twitter profile and they've really got it right in there. So she's got freelance social media manager. I help businesses plan and execute social media marketing strategies. Um, very simple to the point. And of course, as a social media manager, she's going to be on multiple social media platforms showing this sort of thing off, but just some examples of different ways people are doing this online. Okay, so let's talk about finding jobs and companies for side hustle projects, uh, part-time jobs, that sort of thing. There's a number of different ways to actually find work that's available. Uh, one of the things that freelancers and people who have side part-time jobs say is, has been really helpful for them is to go to either current or past employers. So I say current employers because this might be a situation where you're trying to transition out of full-time work. And so you might propose to your current employer that they take you on as a freelancer, continuing to do some of the same things that you've been doing, but that hopefully frees you up to do more freelance work in other areas. Um, and some people do that to, to great success. It really just depends on your employer. So you know, think about that before you actually approach them if they might be open to that sort of thing. And then past employers too, if you have a good track record with previous employers, you could reach back out to them and say, hey, I'm available for part-time work doing X, Y, and Z. If you ever have a need for that sort of thing, I would be happy to help out. And people also have a good track record of that because you already have the relationship, you've proven yourself to those folks, and um, hopefully they would, they would be willing to take you back on if you did a good job the first time. Um, and then of course you could look for freelance job listings. So I always recommend going to smaller sites or specialty sites to do searching um, only because the really big sites that are out there will give you millions and millions of job listings, but you really don't need that many. <laughs> it can actually be a big waste of time to be sifting through all of them. So especially when it comes to these kind of part-time or freelance types of jobs, going to a smaller site, you're gonna get fewer listings, but hopefully they'll be more tailored 
um, to what you're looking for. And so you can go to smaller sites that are you know, specializing in your particular career area or the type of work that you want to do, or sites that specialize in freelance work or part-time work um, or something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also on social media, reaching out to different companies or individuals on social media and pitching yourself as somebody who might be able to help them with a project or uh, doing whatever it is that you would like to help them do, that could be one way to get in as well. Um, and then also professional and industry associations can be very helpful um, just for meeting people and talking about yourself as somebody who does this type of work on the side um, and really building your reputation, getting contacts, and potentially finding new clients that way. Uh, co-working spaces are actually really nice for professional networking. So for anybody who's not familiar, a co-working space is essentially an office uh, type setup that anybody can go into and rent a little bit of space. So they're very common for people who freelance or do remote work um, because you don't wanna be in your home office all day, every day by yourself. So if you go to a co-working space, um, that gives you a little bit of human interaction. It helps you get the buzz of the office that you might miss, but without having to go to the office every single day. So you can kind of choose which days you wanna go to a co-working space. But it might be worth um, you know, going to a co-working space once in a while just for that interaction with other people. And especially because it's such a specialized niche, there's lots of freelancers, there's lots of remote workers in co-working spaces. And generally they're a pretty friendly bunch um, from my experiences in, in personally, I found people that go to co-working spaces to be very friendly. And, uh, and they often have meetings or um, special you know, happy hours and things like that where you actually are encouraged to stop what you're working on and talk to the people around you, um, which is a really nice way to get to know people who are already doing this sort of work. And then definitely spread the word. Tell your friends, your family, your neighbors, uh, your professional network. I have one person who swears that his chiropractor is his best source of clients because she knows so many different types of people. Um, so she always says, oh yeah, I know somebody who could definitely you know, take you up on that, or I know somebody who could help you out with that or whatever it might be. Um, so just the, the lesson is to spread the word, tell people that you are doing this type of work now, that you're going to be starting this side practice, and, um, and just let them know that you are open to this sort of thing. Okay, so where to actually search for freelance job listings? Um, so FlexJobs is one place. We have um, almost 10,000 freelance jobs currently listed, and that doesn't include just par straight part-time jobs. Um, so for part-time jobs, I believe that would be another uh, six or 7,000 listed there. So it's a pretty good chunk of, of our jobs that are freelance or part-time. And um, FlexJobs is a membership site. So if you wanted to join, you could use this special code for everybody here. It's UMN alum, and that's all one word, and you get up to 30% off um, our subscriptions. And um, for anybody who is already a FlexJobs member and you wish you had that code, <laughs> you can actually contact us and we'll apply the code to your, um, to your account. So you don't have to worry about that. You can still get the discount. Um, and like I said, you can also, if you're not a member, you can see all of the listings for free. You'll just get a kind of basic description and um, some uh, information on what the job actually is and what it entails. And you can at least use FlexJobs to do research that way to see what's available in your field, even if you don't sign up for FlexJobs, that's totally fine. Um, there's a lot of really good, useful information that's free and open to the public. Uh, and then Forbes.com has a really good list, 79 websites to get that freelance job fast. Oh, and I have an S where I shouldn't. Um, but that's a really good list of specialty websites that help people find freelance jobs. Um, Skill Crush is another good site. They have a list of the 25 best sites for finding remote work. Um, so if you're looking to work remotely in particular, those sites may include part-time and freelance and full-time jobs. So you'll just have to filter your search a little bit. But for if you're looking to work remotely, they're really good resources. And then you can also search for your field um, or focus and freelance job listings to see if there are any other very specialty sites that, that are dedicated to what you do in particular. Uh, but if you Google any of these lists, uh, the Forbes or the Skill Crush lists, uh, you should be able to find those pretty easily. Those are just the, the names there. But really good resources for, um, for specific to freelance and remote types of jobs. Okay, so we talked a little bit about keywords before, but I did want to touch on this again because it relates to scams. 
Um, especially if you're looking to work remotely in your side hustle, you want to stay away from the phrases work from home and work at home. Um, they are some of the most common ways to describe that way of working because that's what you're doing. You work from home or you work at home. But scammers have long understood this and they've often used those phrases in their scam job listings. So if you are searching for work from home or work at home jobs, you're gonna be much more likely to pull up a lot of, of job listings that are fake and that are from scammers who are just trying to get your personal information or your banking information or to get you to, to do some free work for them. So some really good keywords to use, um, those are all listed below. So we've got one column for if you're looking to do at-home work, uh, the safer keywords are telecommute, virtual, remote, and all the other ones listed there. I would say those top three, telecommute, virtual, and remote, are probably the most common that we see um, from legitimate employers especially. So you could probably stick with those three to begin with and get some pretty good results. Uh, for gig work, for this kind of side hustle, um, freelance work in particular, there's a lot of different keywords that you could use there. And then if you're looking for something with flexible hours or specifically part-time hours, like a, a side job that is a part-time job, um, those are some of the different phrases that you could also search for. The frustrating thing, if you're looking for this type of work, is that employers choose their own words. So there's not a uniform way to find this type of work. There are many different phrases. And really, it just comes down to using these different keywords to see what's out there and what comes back and to see if there's any trend that you can pick up on for your career or your industry um, where they're using a certain word that you can kind of rely on as the most common word for your, your specialty. Um, and you might not find that. <laughs> Sometimes you might just have to be searching for a lot of different phrases uh, over the course of your searches. So let's talk about how to avoid job scams just in case you do come across something that seems a little bit fishy. Uh, so some warning signs of scams are if there's no company name or if it's a, gen a generic email address, um, that's one red flag. And I should say all the things listed here are red flags. So it doesn't 100% guarantee that if you find one of these things um, being wrong that you're definitely dealing with a scam. But the more of these that start to add up, the more likely that you are actually dealing with a scam. Um, the second is if there's a vague job description or no job description at all. So if they're really not clear on what you would actually be doing in this type of side job, that's a red flag. Uh, if they ask you to do an interview over Instant Messenger or IM, that's another red flag. Most companies will at least do a phone interview. Um, even for remote jobs, they're going to want to talk to you. Uh, it might be a video interview or a phone interview. Um, the, it, remote jobs will rarely actually make you come on site to do the, to the interview, although that does happen sometimes. Um, but for on-site, part-time, and freelance type of work, they may ask you to actually come in for the interview. Um, and then if you're offered a job immediately, <laughs> that's a big red flag. You will still have to do the traditional sorts of things in this job search. So you'll have to talk to somebody. You'll have to interview. You'll have to talk about your best skills and why you're the person for the job. Um, and then typically the company is going to take some time to think about it. Now, you might have a job interview that goes really well, and at the end of it, they do offer you a job. That's different than an immediate job offer. An immediate one is where you apply, and they either call you or they write you back, and they say, hey, you're hired. <laughs> that usually does not happen, unless it's a scam. Um, the other key piece of that is if they urge you to accept the job without having any time to think about it. So if they say, oh, nope, sorry, we need your answer right now. Most scammers do that because they want to stop people from thinking about the situation critically before they make a decision. They want you to act quickly. They want you to be excited that you just got a job offer and take it. Um, that way you don't have a chance to think about it and wonder if this is legitimate or not. Um, and then the other thing is copycat companies. So we've seen this happen with some larger companies, um, GE, Apple, Amazon, and CNBC all come to mind, where a scammer has basically copied the entire company's uh, website design, they create a fake website that looks like the real company's website. It's got their logo, their branding, and they post scam jobs on the site, um, hoping to lure people in because if you see a big name, you let your guard down a little bit and think, oh, this is a legitimate company, of course. Um, the real big thing that I can tell you with any of these scams is to trust your instincts. If something doesn't seem right, take a few minutes and, uh, and do some extra research, and I'll show you how you can do that. So there's a couple different ways. The first method is for any company or job that just doesn't seem quite right to you or that you just want to kind of make sure is not a scam, 
If you open up a new browser and search for that company's name or the job title and the word scam, you will get results back. Um, and some of them, if it is a scam, will be talking about how this company or this job is a scam. So the nice thing on, about you know, other people having been scammed, which is not nice for them, but the nice thing is a lot of people will want to alert other folks about these scams. And so they will say online on different review sites or uh, the Better Business Bureau or even the FBI actually writes about this um, a decent amount of the time, uh, you know, what this scam is, what the company's name is, all of that sort of stuff. So you can find a lot actually by doing this very simple search. And then the other thing is, if you have come across a, a side job at a well-known company that just kind of seems not quite right, you're not sure if it's the company, the correct company, or if it's a copycat company, if you open up a new browser and search for that company's name and the word careers, you can find their real careers page and compare it to the, uh, to the, the potentially fake one that you were already on and see if the web addresses actually match up. Are the URLs the same or are they different? And that will tell you if you're on the real careers page or a scam one. Okay, so just in time to open it up to questions, um, I just wanna go over some action steps, but as I'm going through these, um, please feel free to put in as many questions as you would like, and I'll try to get to, to as many of them as we can. Um, so you can just type those questions into that GoToWebinar control panel. Um, so the first thing is to decide on your specialty or your focus or whether you want one. <laughs> some people like to be a generalist, some people really like to specialize. It's, it's a total preference thing. It depends a little bit on your you know, career field, your industry, the job market that you're getting into. Um, so do a little bit of research and then decide what your areas of focus might be if you're gonna have some. Then you want to um, research your specialty to make sure that you've got the lay of the land, you understand um, you know, the types of jobs that could be found, the uh, going rates for that sort of thing. Um, and just get a little bit more information so you know what you're getting into. Also join fellow group, groups of fellow freelancers or side hustlers um, or professional part-time workers. Um, and like I said, those groups, you can find them on LinkedIn and uh, Freelancers Union and a number of different places. So um, those are all good to join. And then brand yourself online. A big piece of, of doing this sort of work on the side is putting yourself out there as somebody who does this work on the side. So that includes branding yourself across social media and LinkedIn, um, of course, updating your resume or creating a separate resume that is more focused on this side hustle that you've got going um, and really just putting it out there that you offer this type of work for people. And then you have to search for open jobs and contact potential clients and actually start applying for things. I think sometimes we get really, um, caught up in the preparation and planning, and we forget that last key step, which is to actually apply. So put yourself out there, start contacting people, and, uh, and see what comes back. All right, so I'd love to answer any questions that we have coming in. Hi, Bree, it's Marissa here. Thank you so much for your presentation and for sharing all of those really tangible and helpful tips, and we do have quite a few questions that came in during this discussion. So Great. Um, maybe as a quick follow-up to uh, where, you're, where you ended your presentation talking about scams, um, there were a few questions about people wondering, you know, what, um, what, are the, what are the risks involved with these scams? What is it that they're trying, these employers are trying to get um, from folks um, that they need to be mindful of and watch out for? Oh, great question. Yeah. So what, what is the goal of a scammer when they're actually trying to scam you? Exactly. So there's a couple, a couple different things. One is to just get your personal information. So they might be looking for social security numbers, bank account numbers, anything that they can get from you that might help them to steal your identity. Um, that's one aspect of it. Some scammers are looking for that. Um, other scammers are actually looking for you to help them with money laundering. So they might hire you and say, hey, we just need you to, um, to buy this piece of software and, um, and you know, give us your, your bet, or so they'll send you a check to reimburse you for the purchase of that software, but the check is bogus. And so you'll deposit it into your account and they'll say, this is a very specific scam, hopefully you guys won't, <laughs> won't come across this, but they'll send you extra and they'll say, if you could just send us back $100 from that check for $400 that we sent you, that would be great. Um, and you, it's a bogus check. So you wind up sending them hundred dollars of your own money and you've deposited a fake check for $400. So 
So, um, so it's something like that where they're trying to get access to your cash essentially. And okay. then the final reason is for free labor. Sometimes they are trying to hire people um, either in some sort of pyramid scheme. This often happens with sales jobs um, where they're trying to just get you in to recruit other people into this program and they'll have you work for a few weeks, but you'll never actually get paid. And sometimes it is free labor. So if you're you know, a writer or something like that, they're going to say, yes, you're hired. We need you to write this thing right now. And then you know, we'll work out the details later. And so you do this free work for them and you wind up never getting paid. Uh, so those are the three main things. Got it. Thank you for sharing those. Um, another question came from someone who's looking for um, advice on starting out and what tips you have for marketing yourself that would convince someone to give them a shot at a side job. Yeah, that's a great question. So I think if you're just starting out, you really want to focus on that branding aspect of really, because when you have a great strong brand, and it doesn't have to be extensive, but it really has to just put you out there in multiple places as someone who does this type of work for clients. Um, and once you have that strong brand, it helps to build people's confidence in you. So when we looked at some of those examples before, I mean, it really, you sort of believe right up front, these people do that type of work. They are clear about what they do. Um, they, they have it out there in different platforms, but they're all saying the same thing across those platforms. So the, the, your brand and what you put out there about yourself, as long as it's consistent and very clear is a really good way to start a solid reputation as somebody who does side hustle work or freelance work. Um, the other thing is if you can get any testimonials from previous employers, it doesn't have to be work that you've done on the side. It can be your full-time roles if it's at all related to what you've done. If you can get any testimonials from previous employers, it could be managers or coworkers, but that just say how reliable you are, what a great job you did. Um, if it is related to your side hustle, you know, what projects did you do really well? What have you completed? Um, anything that's even just a couple sentences that that backs you up as a person who can be trusted and you can use those you know quotes on your LinkedIn page and wherever you're branding yourself um, that can kind of help build your reputation if you don't have a lot of clients already um, so that's another aspect of it too that's great and I think your answer there spoke to a couple other questions that came in as well about how to brand yourself as a generalist or to brand yourself when you're looking to create find a side job where you where you'll be gaining new skills hopefully as opposed to tapping into skills you already have oh yes um here's one uh do you have any advice around speaking with your current full-time job when you are looking to start a side hustle uh, yeah, there's a couple things that I would recommend. One is before you talk to anybody at uh, like a manager or HR or something like that, um, look around and see if there's anybody else that you know at the company who has gone that route. So if you're looking to turn your current job into a freelance job where you, you know, they become one of your clients, has anybody else at the company done that before? Um, because if there has been someone who's done that, if you can sit them down for even 10 minutes and just ask, you know, how did you make this work? What did you say? Who did you talk to? You could get some really good information there. Um, if there hasn't been that, then it is, it depends on your relationship with your manager, um, you, you know, the HR department, if they are, uh, you know, a good place to go for information. But you might, if you do have a decent relationship with your manager, you could ask, you know, I've just been thinking about, you know, I love doing this type of work. I love working here, but I'd also like to kind of branch out and maybe work with some other folks. Um, and is that something that has ever been done where somebody you know, could potentially freelance in this role and then work for other folks as well? I will say the one red flag to watch out for in this situation is if there's any sort of non-disclosure agreement that you've signed or non-compete clause, anything that, that is a warning sign that doing this same work for other people is not accepted with that company, that, the, that you would essentially be a competitor if you went out there as a freelancer, um, that's a huge red flag. That's when you don't want to approach your current employer. Good advice. Um, another question is about practical logistics of starting this work. So can you talk a little bit about the logistics or how to learn more about the logistics for arranging payment setting up a contract, paying taxes, reporting income, all of those really fun side pieces to cite. <laughs> yes, I would say, yeah, from, for the freelance, um, even for people who are just freelancing a little bit on the side, um, you know, even if you're just making a little bit of money each year doing freelancing, this is all stuff you're going to have to figure out, um, which is fun for, you know, some people like it, most people don't. 
Um, so yeah, there's a couple of freelancers union uh, is a really good resource for um, key information on how to set yourself up as a freelancer. And it goes into setting rates, tax implications, how, how to file taxes as a freelancer. Should you incorporate a business or do you not have to do that? Um, all of those questions that, that you have when you're first starting out, that's a really good resource for that also. Um, so I would direct anybody to Freelancers Union to get that information in particular because they have a lot of details and there are so many details. I mean, just the, even the question of whether to incorporate your business or not is one of those huge things that they help to explain a little bit better than I can <laughs> in a couple minutes. So Definitely. Freelancers Union. And then there's a couple of questions, um, just people looking for more information about flex jobs, mm -hmm. um, specifically around um, your career advisory services, any help or, that you provide with resume writing or job searching. And then connected to that, um, do, there's a question about does flex jobs verify the employers they list on their website to ensure their legitimacy? Sure, I'm happy to help uh, answer those. So yes, we, um, as a Flex Jobs member, the, the biggest things that you get um, that somebody doesn't get as a non-member are access to the full descriptions for each job and the contact information for the employers. Um, we also do screen every single employer and job before it gets posted to the site, which is why we are a membership site this way. So instead of um, taking money from employers to post their jobs and letting anyone post, we are very particular about which employers and which jobs actually make it to the site. And we don't take money from employers to run the company. So um, the subscription site is basically allowing us to be completely focused on job seekers and what they need and creating a really clean database for them. Um, so that's that's one of the main reasons for the subscription. Um, along with the subscription, there is skill testing where you can take skills tests to see how you match up compared to other folks looking for the same type of work um, and areas that you might need to improve on. Um, there is, uh, we just started a couple weeks ago, a career coaching service, which I'm doing that. I'm the coach for right now. It's a very small program that we're hoping to um, increase over time. Um, but that is something that that is offered for Flex Jobs members um, exclusively. And there's a few other benefits too, but just to kind of answer the main questions that were there, those are some of the benefits of Flex Jobs. Great. Thank you, Bree. I think as I there were a lot of questions that came in and I tried to uh, collapse them where possible so that we <laughs> had enough time. Um, and I hope that we were able to address everyone's questions. Again, just want to thank you for all of the advice and tips that you shared. Um, we will be sharing the link to this video recording out with everybody who registered for today's webinar. So if they wanna revisit any piece of um, the conversation or any of the slides and get that information, they'll be able to, to do that. Um, one question did just come in, how long is the UMN alum code good for? Oh, it's good forever. So it won't ever expire. If you decide a year from now, you're ready to start side hustling or whatever it might be, you can use that code. Great. So when we say you're a gopher forever, that includes your flesh. <laughs> um, I'm just going to close out here um, with a couple of reminders. Uh, we do have those upcoming webinars that we shared earlier, and you can go to umnalumni.org slash virtual uh, to see the dates and times and register for those. Again, if you're interested in this topic and you wanna see an example of an, a fellow U of M grad who's been there, done that, check out our conversation from this morning on Facebook Live. And again, just wanna thank our members for helping us make this webinar series possible. Um, we couldn't do it without you. And so this is uh, Marissa and Bree, we're signing off and hope you have a great day. Thanks everybody. Thank you.